The true fera was a benthopelagic freshwater fish that swam in the water column near the lake bottom, feeding upon zooplankton. Together with the similarly extinct gravinch, the fera was one of the most caught freshwater fishes in Lake Geneva. In 1890 these two fishes constituted 68% of the total captures in the lake. Due to a combination of overexploitation and heavy hybridization with introduced Corrigonus species, it became extremely scarce and was last seen in Lake Geneva in 1920. The Bernard's wolf was described as, white with black-tipped hair along the ridge of the back. It was formally discovered, classified, and named after Peter Bernard and Joseph Bernard, his nephew, after an adult male skin and skull was collected by them and brought to the National Museum of Canada. There were very few specimens of this subspecies that were recovered, around three or four in total. It went extinct around 1920, they were previously widespread in their native habitat. Described as arboreal, the red-mustached fruit dove inhabited montane forests at elevations of at least 1,370 meters above sea level. It was endemic to French Polynesia. The last record was of the species on Haiva Oa, in 1922. Its extinction has been attributed to predation by the introduced great horned owl, as well as by introduced rats and cats. The head, breast, and neck were bluish-gray, and the tail was short, almost square-shaped. The underpart plumage was golden yellow in color. The juvenile had less yellow on the hind neck and crown. The breast was green tinged and had light yellowish on the peripheries of the feathers. The Madeiran wood pigeon closely resembled the wood pigeon of mainland Europe, but the plumage was somewhat darker, especially on the upper parts and under wing covers. The vinous pink of the breast was more extensive. The German ornithologist Ernst Schmitz lived on the island of Madeira by 1896 to 1906, a time when the Madeiran wood pigeon was already rare. Despite great efforts, Schmitz managed to collect only a few specimens and eggs. In May 1924, no Madeiran wood pigeon was found, nor was any seen in later years, not even by local pigeon hunters. This subspecies is most likely extinct now. Europeans' first recorded encounters with California grizzly bears are found in diaries kept by several members of the 1769 Portola Expedition, the first European land exploration of what is now the state of California. Settlers began to populate California and establish large cattle herds as the main industry. The ranchers' domesticated livestock were easy prey for the grizzly bears roaming freely across the state. By eating their livelihood and scaring them, the grizzlies became enemies of the rancheros. Vaqueros hunted the grizzlies, often roping and capturing them to be pitted against other animals in public battles. These bear baiting events flourished as popular spectacles in 19th century California. Bloody fights that pitted bears against bulls often inspired betting as to whether the bear or the bull would win. In the beginning of the 20th century, almost every grizzly bear in California had been tracked down and killed. The last hunted California grizzly bear was shot in August 1922, although no body, skeleton or pelt was ever produced. Two years later in 1924, what was thought to be a grizzly was spotted in Sequoia National Park for the last time and thereafter, grizzlies were never seen again in California.
The Levuana moth became a serious pest for coconut plants in 1877, in Viti Levu. On the island, outbreaks of the Levuana moth were frequent at that time, and as a result coconut palms were devastated due to moth larvae feeding on the underside of leaves. As a consequence, copra production was severely affected and coconut cultivation became unprofitable on Viti Levu. Many attempts were made to eradicate the species, all of which were unsuccessful until the 1925 Biological Control Program. Like other hartebeests, the bubal was a social animal, it was formerly found north of the Saharan Desert. According to 19th century writers, the bubal hartebeest preferred rocky areas with a fair amount of vegetation, in contrast to the sandy, drier habitat of the attics. Its main predator was the also extinct Barbary lion. The subspecies declined sharply during the course of the 19th century especially after the French conquest of Algeria, when entire herds were massacred at once by the colonial military. The last known herd, numbering only 15 animals was located in Morocco in 1917, all but three of them were killed by the same hunter. The last animal in Morocco was shot in 1925. The last captive bubal, a female died in Paris in 1923. Little is known about morphological details of Caucasian wisent including body size due to extinction before modern scientific approaches were made. Comparard the extant European bison, it was morphology more adapted to mountainous habitat. Apparently, it was generally smaller, had shorter but higher hooves and had more developed shoulder girdles. In the 17th century, the Caucasian wisent still populated a large area of the Western Caucasus. After that human settlement in the mountains intensified and the range of the Caucasian wisent became reduced to about one-tenth of its original range at the end of the 19th century. In the 1860s the population still numbered about 2,000, but was reduced to only 500 in 1917 and to only 50 in 1921. Local poaching continued. Finally, in 1927, the last three Caucasian wisent were killed. The Indian Javan rhinoceros is a solitary animal with the exception of breeding pairs and mothers with calves. They sometimes congregate in small groups at salt licks and mud wallows. Wallowing in mud is a common behavior for all rhinos, the activity allows them to maintain cool body temperatures and helps prevent disease and parasite infestation. The main factor in the continued decline of the rhinoceros population has been poaching for horns, a problem that affects all rhino species. The horns have been a traded commodity for more than 2,000 years in China, where they are believed to have healing properties. Because the rhinoceros range encompasses many areas of poverty, it has been difficult to convince local people not to kill a seemingly useless animal which could be sold for a large sum of money. The Guadalupe ameba was a species of Tyidae lizards that was endemic to Guadalupe. It is known from specimens collected by early European explorers. The fossil record shows that it once ranged across Guadalupe and Marie Galante, but in most recent times it was restricted to Marie Galante. It was last recorded in 1914. Its extinction likely occurred when this area was decimated by a hurricane in 1928. The Guadalupe ameba was reported as a ground-dwelling lizard. It fed on plants and carrion. The Ethiopian amphibious rat has been spotted very few times in the wild. 
It has been sighted in the Ethiopian highlands in their wetland areas. It is specifically adapted to live near or in close contact with water. The rat showed multiple adaptations to aquatic life which is uncommon for rats in Africa, so it makes living elsewhere very difficult. This is why scientists think that with the degradation of its habitat, it is now likely extinct. Almost all that is known about this species is taken from a single study that was conducted in the 1920s. More research about this species, its habits, and its environment are needed. Darwin's Nesorisomys is a species of rodent in the genus Nesorisomys that lived on Santa Cruz Island in the Galapagos Islands. It was probably nocturnal and inhabited burrows or rock crevices under bushes. Only four specimens exist, this extinction may have been caused by competition and disease created by the introduction of non-native brown and black rats. The Vari's nightjar is endemic to China. Its natural habitat is cold desert. However, it is threatened by habitat loss. This bird is only known from a single 1929 specimen from Xinjiang. It has never been found again, and it is quite possibly invalid as it has not yet been compared to the similar subspecies of the European nightjar. <laughs> 